Hi, we ready to start? <laughs> Hi, welcome everybody. It's so fun to see all the attendees who are popping up and joining us. Welcome to LACE. It is a little bit odd to be talking into the void, but I'm very happy to see my friends Carmen and Daniela there. Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> so um, usually when we do an event, I don't totally assume that everybody who's joined us is familiar with LACE. So I will tell you that we are the longest running incubator for artists and curators in Los Angeles. And LACE was started in 1978 in downtown LA by a bunch of artists. And we've uh, moved to Hollywood in the early 90s and have been located there ever since. So that's the super quick sketch, but please go to the website <laughs> and learn more. Um, tonight, we're super excited to have um, an event centered around Carmen Argote. Um, the program for the evening is very simple. We're gonna have a conversation between Carmen and Daniela Lieja Quintanar, who is LACE's uh, Chief Curator and Director of Programming. I wanna thank the LACE team for putting together this online event. This is our first formal um, online event for LACE and a special shout out to Juan Silverio, who is the person behind the curtain, who is uh, gonna be queuing everything up for us tonight. Uh, I do want to tell you a little bit about the history of the LACE editions. Um, LACE was one of the, really one of the first small nonprofits that um, uh, had started an edition program to help raise funds for the organization. And we've had a, an illustrious group of artists who have contributed over the years. That includes um, Mike Kelly, Chris Burden, John Baldessari, Amy Adler, Jorge Pardo, Raymond Pettibone, and Laura Owens. Um, two years ago, we did a, an edition with Barbara Kruger in celebration of our 40th anniversary. And um, so this year we have, um, uh, we're really excited to have Carmen Argote do our edition and, um, and to celebrate that edition through this evening event. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, one last thing, uh, I do wanna let you know that our next online event is September 9th, and that's the LACE Annual Benefit Art Auction. So unfortunately, we, we're not able to hold the event in person this year, so we will be doing it, on um, doing it online. It'll be a celebration of all uh, artists from the LACE community. And then um, we have lots of programming in the works for the fall and the spring, and those are on our website, so you can check that out. Uh, so without further ado, I do want to introduce um, Daniela and Carmen, and um, feel free to send me a chat if you want to uh, say hello. I'm, I'm so happy to see all of you. Thanks for coming tonight. Bye. Thank you, Sarah. Um, welcome everybody that is here um, in this virtual platform gathering to celebrate uh, Carmen Argote uh, practice and this awesome LACE edition. Um, first, I want to like situate ourselves. I know we're like, there's people in other parts of the world uh, watching us. Um, but we are like, you know, in the same planet, sharing this planet. And um, I want to ask you, Carmen, where are you located and what part of your house are you? Now? So I'm on the east side of Los Angeles. And right now I'm in uh, what I use as uh, my studio. This is my, my home. So it's like a studio, also the living room, domestic space, kind of. Um, the whole house is really the studio, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So also, I, I am in Boyle Heights. I'm very close to what it was, the Los Angeles River. And um, so I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and contemporary land of the Tongva people. Um, this specific area of Boyle Heights was called Apachianga. And the Tongva people um, are the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. 
Um, we also want to recognize that other Native American groups that has been displaced from their original land now inhabit in, in Los Angeles. And as well as uh, indigenous diasporas from Latin America, Al Caribe, and Oceania. So now that we like kind of land, um, and I know also we should um, remind that uh, Lace is in Hollywood, also is in Tongva land. Uh, the space is still there and we're, we're gonna start activated little by little. Um, but now also the space is part of the Lace community. So Carmen, um, I wanna introduce you uh, very fast, but also let me just explain very quickly to the participants, the audience that is listening. Uh, we're gonna have Carmen and I a conversation around 30 minutes. And then after that, she's gonna reveal the Lace Edition for us. And then we're gonna open a space for you to ask questions to Carmen. Mm -hmm. So um, it's your practice, Carmen, is uh, very interesting and um, solid, and it's very difficult to describe in, in many ways, but how I wanna do the introduction is just like showing some beautiful images of the most important shows, solo shows that you have had in the past few years. And um, let's just start with the, with the slideshow. Mm -hmm. So this first show, solo show is the most recent that you actually have this year. It feels like so far away, but it was like this year, uh, me at market at the Visual Arts Center University of Texas in Austin. Then uh, in 2019, you have the show As a Voice, so below at the new museum in New York, a different, different area. And then um, in Nutrition for a Better Life, Compre Chatarra, I love this title. Uh, Ballon Rouge Gallery in Istanbul, Turkey, that also you did a residency over there. Then um, we want to show uh, Manejese con Cuidado, uh, that was at Paos, a beautiful place in Guadalajara, Mexico, or the residency in 2019. And of course, we need to mention that you were part of this amazing group of artists of Made in LA in 2018 with this uh, project called Filtration System for a Process-Based Practice. And um, of course, uh, we wanna just say highlight two group shows. You have been uh, part of many group shows in LA and I think you have been part of this history, but we wanna highlight two shows that you did at LACE, that you were part of it. Uh, so name Sprint at the Black, curated by Emily Watts. Uh, she was one of our LACE emerging curators in 2018 and you present um, Magnolia Mansion. And then the other show that was last year, uh, Paroxysm of Sublime, curated by Anna Miloni and uh, Anna Iwataki, uh, you present Marks from Bird, a beautiful um, photograph uh, in, 2000, in 2019, so, so last year. So Carmen, um, Let's jump into the conversation. So I actually, uh, this slide show uh, the image of uh, part of your exhibition you are having right now um, after four, four months of being in quarantine and still being in this uh, difficult moment that we are all in worldwide part of um, this health crisis. You have been producing and you have been creating this beautiful work that includes the lace edition and then a show that is across three different spaces in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And you are delivering us this. And I think this is super important uh, that you are bringing together all these works, um, all these spaces um, to, the, to your audience. And I guess like my first question will be, we have been in this crisis where the home becomes the most safe space for some people and uh, recognizing that there has been people that has to go to work. They can like, you know, quarantine. 
and also recognizing that there's a lot of people without homes mm -hmm. and um and then also at the same time the homes becomes the safest place and then at the same time the streets become this dangerous place it's like the public space is totally annihilated and you your practice is like walking being on the public space but also like working in a domestic space so how you have been navigating because you were doing this before and then it shifts totally for everybody and for you so i want you to share us that experience and how you have been able to go back and forth because you have gone in and out uh, to the public space to the domestic space and how that has uh, contributed to, to this huge body of work that you are presenting okay um yes yeah, so um i i feel like the the uh the studio extends outside of, oh, there I am. <laughs> um, the studio extends, um, you know, out, outside of like the, the assigned, let's say like uh, studio space. The studio is actually an embodied uh, thing. It exists in, in the body, in the mind. For me, the city is material. Um, the domestic space and the public space are sites where art can happen, where art is happening all the time. Um, and for me, when I, when I moved into, um, I was doing a residency at Stairwell Gallery, you know, the practice kept going. I kept my walking practice uh, going. I was moving um, between the, the interior space and the exterior, doing these long walks through downtown um, from, from Koreatown through downtown in these like longer loops. Um, and then I was working on the lace print and this idea of, okay, like, I know that the lace print, I need to find what the lace print is going to be. And so um, these, it started as conversations with me and Eric Garrow about what it could be and uh, Sarah and, and Daniela. And, you know, uh, the studio became the sort of living room area in um, in stairwell gallery and i had worked inside domestic spaces in these other sort of situations when i was um, abroad when i was in in madrid uh, i was working in different domestic spaces um, in you know transforming like not transforming but using the the, the tub like the bathtub, the kitchen sink, the stove, yeah. all of those things as materials, the refrigerator, the freezer, these are all, you know, um, there's, for me, there's not a lot of separation um, between where artwork can be made. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, um, is there was like something that you notice difference after like when we start like the quarantine and this um, health crisis is like how um, you know it has been very difficult for for many people like to keep working or keep creating but you were like really um, engaging the, the situation and the moment mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm just like wondering if there's like a difference of um, that happened now and before in that practice. There was a shift. I mean, walking in public space has been important, but it took on a, a different kind of importance. Um, and it goes in conjunction with the way my practice was developing. So, um, or has been developing. Um, it became important for me, it felt very important to be in public space at this moment, um, to move across the landscape, to see what was going on. And this is something that as actually before um, our pandemic, there's an awareness through walking of where we are, um, where we are uh, and who's, who's on the street, where we are as a city, and I'm able to kind of, you know, um, be a pedestrian, be walking and see 
what is actually going on. And for me, that's really important to, to, to sort of acknowledge, to take in, to experience, to be a part of, to be among, um, to be in conversation with. I feel like that is the conversation uh, with, with site and city. Uh, and that is important for me to, to bring into my thinking process and my practice. And at the same time, you know, uh, these, there's, there's ideas in my, in my practice that are constant, this exploration of, you know, systems, um, economic systems, let's say like class systems, uh, what, what, you know, what is the, like where, how are we navigating within the city or how am I navigating within the city as I move from point to point to point? And as, a, as I consume, as I walk, um, you know, why do I have an impulse to, let, let's say, like buy something over another thing? And then I start questioning. And through this, through, I guess, moving and being more aware and being able to see more clearly through my walking um, and being in movement, then I can kind of question uh, more easily and I can I feel like I can see more clearly um, and I will say that something that happened after uh, I had been walking in different parts of the the planet you know like in, in the different cities is that I it was very intentional when I came back to Los Angeles that I wanted to see the sun in the middle of the day that I wanted to reserve that time as a thinking process that that was important that productivity wasn't was was not uh, trying to get the maximum amount of things done in my car that walking is a slow process that walking is a thinking process and that i wanted to prioritize that action and be able to see and experience you know like the sun the air my environment my body in the context of my environment and um and to be able to, to actually bring that into my practice. And so when I say that my body is the studio and the city in a way is, is, is you know, where I, where I think and it's, I, the city is also my material, um, the city is my studio as well. My home is an extension of, of that. It's located within that, um, that movement between, um, is all part of that so yeah so when you say like i i think i found very interesting this like your body is your studio and also we kind of start talking about like um the materials that you also uh has been chose uh for for creating the lace edition and also like a whole new experimentation of uh, of work and that's that our x bar these like protein bar um, that you, you know, like that you decide to use. And I was wondering like, you know, is this weird compact, uh, compressed uh, food that contained a specific um, ingredients and then you are like totally like using it as your primary uh, material. So what, what it took you, what took you to use that material and um yeah what it makes you like test with this material and and what it also makes you continue uh working with the with the granola with the um, protein bars well there's there's several aspects to it one is that you know in you can see like in the work in in, in austin that i was doing i was looking for mark making and process i, I try to privilege the mark of the process in my work and with the print edition i was like i don't know if, if, if gravity or the drips like is there a different way is, is there a different mark and at the same time i was thinking about my own consumption and what i was eating and why i was buying these bars what was what was so interesting for me to want to buy these bars or why did i feel like there's something in the branding that was working that i was also questioning um, the idea of listing the ingredients, um, Rx as prescription is something that's healthy. It was being framed as something very healthy. Um, and the, you know, three egg whites, 14 peanuts, this kind of breakdown of the language, even the font and the packaging, um, the way it would open. Um, and then the object itself, like the two by three uh, rectangle. All of these, uh, 
I started kind of seeing that. And at the same time, this, this RX bar wasn't supposed to have grease in my mind. I don't know, like somehow the construction of it in my imagination with the visuals um, didn't allow for it to contain oil or grease or anything yeah. that I would say like, oh, it's unhealthy. And then it's also, you know, there's a certain economic, um, maybe like circuit that it exists in. Um, it's, uh, they're, they're, they're pricey. I mean, a box is, is kind of expensive. It's like, oh, it's like the price you pay for, for this, this health food. Um, uh, and, and so in my experiments and looking for this mark and then thinking about systems and in questioning why I was consuming something or what was attracting me to something, one of the experiments I did was just placing the bar on a, on a paper and I noticed like this mark, the seep, the oil basically was just, it was like um, the touching of one surface to the other surface left a mark. And that connected it with printmaking for me. So the idea of printmaking being that the paper surface encounters another thing that touches it. Um, I was like, this is, this is, this is printmaking. There's a, there's a transfer. Um, and I want to thank Eric for this term, the oil transfer, you know, the, um, so there's, there's a transferring of information. There's a transferring of, of oil and really there's a transferring of uh, caloric energy, like calorie. I don't know if that's like <laughs> a right word, but there's like the transferring of this thing. And that first mark, those first experiments look like, like language. Um, and so I, using the grid in my work, and you see that in my previous work, I use the grid as a system that organizes. I think of the grid as the city, but also the grid is a way that we organize language um, or it's a system of understanding something visually. So I, I spaced the RX bars, thinking about them in terms of writing, maybe, or like the, the stain began to reveal some kind of language. And I wanted to know what, what's it saying? You know, like, mm -hmm. what is this thing telling me it is? Like, it's like releasing the oil and the, the, from the peanuts. Like, what is it telling me? Like, this is a different way of seeing this thing that's framed one way. And so mm -hmm. it was this, this surprise and curiosity. And I, want, I wanted to know what it was that drove me looking for the print or me looking for what is what could this print be? Um, and one thing that I that I started doing is, at a certain point, you know, the 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 oil when it touches and it is absorbed by the paper surface, the oil with time spreads. So it takes about a day or two for the mark to be made, and then the mark kind of kind of keeps going. But I wanted to almost like. Um, uh, signify like a certain point in time when the mark was made. So I was using these um, brown crayons that are very similar in color to the RX bar, like the waxiness of the crayon seemed fitting. Um, and so it was like this, this idea of tracing the mark after maybe like two days when the mark was solid enough to function as a, almost like a letter or like a, a a symbol of language um, and then sort of mark that point in time and then allowing the seepage of the oil to kind of the, to go into the fibers of the paper and kind of keep spreading. Um, and that's, that's kind of how the, the words or the language started coming forward and that language started turning into sentences. Um, and I started playing with the spacing of the idea of the, the font and like, again, this question of what is it saying to me? Um, a lot of my process is not knowing exactly what the idea is, but following the, following that, that question and then reflecting and having that conversation with the work as it kind of gives me information. So it's like, okay, now I'm going to make these sentences, maybe the spacing, maybe I'm going to place 
the Rx bars, you know, closer together and make sentences, then those sentences are going to be paragraphs. Um, and in, in, in working with, with Eric, uh, he introduced me to this like great paper, this like printmaking paper that absorbs. So I started thinking about the surface of this printmaking paper. It was like this uh, Stonehenge paper um, using the different sort of tonalities of the paper. And, and, and allowing that, that to happen. So I started working on a really large scroll, actually here in the studio. Um, mm -hmm. And the, you know, I bought a uh, roll of paper and started spacing it when this, when the um, sort of shelter in place started. Coincidentally, it was when I had moved in to this place and started marking uh, that language about writing first with this initial layer of, okay, what is it telling me at this scale? And can I move like these, these you know, let's say like 50 or 80 RX bars, can I move them <laughs> down? You know, and at that scale with the roll, they don't, they don't go that far, but they, they, would, they would seep and release the oil and I would trace the mark and then I would move them down and I would trace the mark and keep moving them down with time and each time the oil amount would lessen. So the mark would take longer too. So it was marking in a way like this abstraction of time that was happening that I was feeling. Um, and yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, just like um, this time that you are talking about, I feel like now everything is kind of bleeding, mm -hmm. you know, like it's very difficult to know about time and looking at your at your work it like it, even like you know like this platform is the same platform that we were using before for a meeting or for a meeting with your family it's like all this like bleeding and i feel like um i can see that um on your on your work and like how like um, this series are like how you were describing it as a language that you almost can read it like horizontal or like even like maybe vertical and then um overposing all these uh different times start like bleeding like it's yeah. just like it's like a, a material that is uh kind of you like outline it outline it and it's kind of control it but it's not like what 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 do you like about that on control it? um it's like a and control it material, the, the, the oil. I think that like action initially started with marking a certain stage of it. And then it, at the same time in, in my previous work um, and in this work, that sort of outlining was trying to hold something that could not be held. Um, trying to, uh, maybe like our illusion of control or like trying to, you know, something that we, we attempt to mark or control but the process of time, different, it's, it's, its own inherent uh, qualities of, of, you know, ephemerality or lifespans or things that we, that are out of our control, the, the natural world, the, you know, these, these things that we want to hold on to are structures that really um, we, we, we cannot control. And in my, in my processing, you know, the temperatures were changing, so the pace, changes, we had some really hot days, we had some really cold days, the chocolate and some of them began to melt. And that's, these marks that you see here are like these like melted chocolate chips that started uh, contributing to the marks. And all of this was, was it's, it's, it's a conversation, right? So in the scroll, I remember I, I started from one end and I went to the, to the other end of the roll and then it needed something else. And I started saying, okay, maybe it needs more layers. And I started thinking about weaving almost like these oil stains together, like layering them together at different points in time. So this scroll extended for about three months. Yeah, it almost it was like a, like a diary, you know, like a, not diary, how you say, like diario, like, you know, like a okay. notebook where you're like, noting everyday time um and um uh, so also could you tell us about the 
the paper because the paper also is a material for you and you were talking about um, in other conversations that we had before about how the paper is the skin. And um, could you tell us more about that? So the, the paper with the idea of the print was a surface that's able to receive information um, from another thing touching it. And mm -hmm. during this whole thing, you know, I'm also working at the same time, this is in my studio, I'm working on the film Last Light and I'm walking in the city and at the same time, the, you know, shelter in place orders are changing and time is getting more abstract. All of this is happening simultaneously. Um, and this work exists in a different, almost like at a different pace. Um, the sort of transition from working at Stairwell Gallery where the, those were more like uh, language uh, to kind of when I moved in at the beginning of the pandemic here to um, these more like uh, paragraphs that started transforming into these abstract areas uh, or almost like, I call them like paragraphs towards creatures. And all this time I'm processing and there's this shift that goes from language into the psychological. And at a certain point, I let go of this idea of language. I actually, it's a different language. It's like an, um, a processing, a digesting. And the work begins to tell me actually what it is about. And it's, it, it starts, I start seeing um, what I call these, these creatures. These are things that are, I feel like that I'm digesting in my own body. Um, I start eating the bars, you know, I start moving and um, really processing through the body and seeing this sort of reflected uh, towards me and saying, okay, what, it, what is this? And so you have works like Binge and Sweet Carbs and all this time I'm, I'm thinking about um, the protein bar oil tra transfers with crayon and it becomes apparent that it's showing me, you know, that, that disembodiment with even the things that I'm putting into my body, like with our food. And going back to the RX bar and its breakdown of things, you know, when I start thinking about an apple is 97 calories, or I start thinking about a yogurt is 14 grams of protein. And I start thinking about this RX bar, three egg whites, you know, 12 grams of protein, so many grams of fat, so many uh, carbohydrates, fiber. I start breaking these things down and there is a separation. This, it reveals like the system that's leading to this feeling that I had been having of a separation from my own body. Um, it's, it's, uh, and, it, and it applies to, to the wider systems that, that I'm, you know, like uh, this, this way that I'm seeing um, food and my relationship to, to the world around me. Not, not just with food, but with my interactions with people, my interactions walking in the city and seeing, you know, bodies on the street. The, this distancing that's happening uh, and how it's affected me psychologically and then visually, like how that translates into visual language and how the artwork is able to reveal that to me um, through, through its, own, its own visual language and, uh, you know, through these creatures. Yeah, and I just, um, you know, I found very fascinating how you are talking about the, like how we are so separate, like with our bodies, like getting this granola bar is just like, you're just feeding your body to get energy to, co to keep producing. Mm -hmm. And that's what the system wants you, you know, it's just like, just don't, don't even think about what is coming inside your body. It's just like energy so you can keep going. And also I feel like annulates the other. So we don't know where these knots came from, who picked them up or who packed, you know, who was in the factory there. Like, is this just a uh, distance that you are talking and uh, that I see in your work and resonates a lot of right now uh, with this time of like, we are like so isolated now and um, seeing your artwork also reminds me to, think of our, our bodies inside because they, they look like gods. We were talking about this, no, like intestines, but also the grease on the, on the blood. Um, yeah. So 
I, I, I found very fascinating this. And now we are like in, they put at the next slide, which is searching for the willow pattern. And this is kind of like the only artwork that is breaking because this was uh, produced before this other body of work. Um, but I really wanted to have it because I think your practice is, is like you were talking about weaving, no? It's like all weave it together. There's like ways that if you enter into your drawings, you can access actually to, to this type of work, which is like here you are using the vertical and the scrolls vertically. Yeah. And then for the work that um, we have been talking about, uh, you have been working more horizontal and more on the ground. Even your like your film um, shows a lot of like concrete. I, I I was very fascinated about like you make us look into the ground. Un poco como ponerse en la tierra. So can you tell us about this? Yeah. So let's let's go back to the willow pattern really quickly. The the ones above the the ones with the grouping. So on this one, you see the use of the grid, you see the use of gravity. The material here are these um, ceramic oxides. So like um, copper carbonate and um, yellow iron oxide and chrome oxide green that are usually used for, um, that are usually fired onto ceramic ware. So you, the use of material is always, uh, it's, it's, it frames a, like a context and within an economy. And this was, was the economy of like trade, uh, the trade routes. This was um, gonna go to um, an art fair that, that was canceled uh, because of COVID. So of course, like all of us. <laughs> like, but, but what was interesting about this is that each pocket cannot contain the mark. So it's kind of like the outline, the material, um, and this one is oxides mixed with gum arabic which is like this solution um, used in watercolor. Um, the, the, the material expands beyond its sort of assigned area, which is in this case, these pockets and the grid. Um, and then as we, as we, there's like a repetition of that gesture, that gesture of like, you know, expansion. And then here you have gravity kind of uh, making the mark. So you have that vertical. Um, and then let's, let's go down. Um, uh, to, to the next one, actually, to the one where I'm horizontal. And so I, I love that you chose this slide because it's true when the, in, in my walks, I mean, something that before the pandemic was very apparent to me in my walks, I always felt like I was walking and I was sort of moving through these different dimensions where the ground would lift and maybe the, the ground would actually go vertical and I would think about uh, the shifting, like, like the earth, the fact that we're actually walking on our sides and the trees are growing, you know, um, you know, horizontally and, and these things. And then with, as, uh, as, as I was walking um, these last few months, I noticed my gaze really gravitating towards the ground and surfaces and textures, but a, but a shift downward. And looking at, um, this is a parking lot in Lincoln Park, Usually it's filled with cars and uh, being able to see almost like I started seeing the celestial in these oil stains. I started seeing, I don't know, like galaxies and um, at the same time, this, this order imposed upon this kind of more expansive element, uh, the structure of the parking lot. And, it, and just thinking about new perspectives or new ways of seeing different uses of these marks. So what if they're not used to indicate where you park your car, but they're used, you know, and like we're perceived in a different way. So I think I was really kind of processing different ways of seeing and, you know, like that came into the film and that came into the work and that came into the prints. Um, it was all sort of moving between the, the, the drawings, you know, and all of these different elements. So here you see it at an early stage um, where you see it uh, as more like language. This is like the spacing initially of, of language with the, with the boxes of RX bars. And then, so I had done two layers here and this is at lace. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I, um, I had been thinking about, let's, let's go to the pizza one really quickly on the top. I had been thinking about first like these different economies, you know, like, okay, the, the health food um, RX bar exists on one point and then the, the pizza, um, which is comfort food, um, more like a fast food accessible, made for groups, whereas the RX bar is made for an individual. Like these seemed kind of separate to me. And uh, at first I was like, oh, I want this other language, other language on top of this previous language. It needs like a different kind of mark. And the more I worked with the pizza, what the work was beginning to show me is I started thinking about the, uh, you know, like when you put a napkin and you blot a pizza slice to remove mm. some oil. <laughs> and, and, and you usually you're like, okay, that removes like 30 to 50 calories. And, and I started thinking about those things and how something that I perceived as sort of existing on separate, in, 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 these, in these separate economies and these separate systems was actually the same, it's in the same system of the disembodiment. It's in the same kind of system. Um, and so these, these pictures here are um, just part of the making of the process. I, I needed to see the whole scroll, which I, can, I couldn't extend here in my studio. So this, this scroll, um, maybe we can go back up really quickly. Um, thanks, Juan. <laughs> Um, this one was extended at lace and I did it in front of the storefront and uh, I needed to weigh down the pizzas so they would get a good press. And so it was like the pizza boxes and the, the, the food for less bags that I had from my groceries and then the stack of artillery magazines that was available and coincidentally it was Baldessari that was on the cover. And just in the processing of this work, this sort of action happened and I think about the visuals here and this sort of private action that happened at LACE and it's kind of part of the work in in the memory of it and in the documentation but now yeah we can go down yeah you were almost kind of like performing and also was very fascinating because of Valdesari also has a LACE edition and I was like oh and then you're producing the LACE edition at the same time it was like a really nice uh moment and i feel like that's also part like i really like that of your practice that you really allow yourself to experiment to you know like uh, even like performing uh, the work and here we are seeing like the final um work uh, of all this process of like uh, granola bars and the pizza and um there are also almost like codexes to me yeah you know like like codices and um, could you tell us a little bit more about the idea of, um, you know, like this is, you were talking about transferring um, the oil, but also that the paper is absorbing. And then this concept of digesting and digesting the city. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that in, in, in relation with this work? Well, the, 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 the process of digesting I mean, there's, there's the understanding of it as, you know, something being processed through the body um, and energy being extracted and kind of like all the, like all those different processes. Um, but it's, I, I really felt like in my walks, I was processing the energy of the city. I was digesting the energy of the city. I was taking that in and with the paper surface, you know, it started as, again, like this idea of skin and print. And as I walked and, you know, things kind of developed and I couldn't touch surfaces, there was an even greater impulse to keep working with paper and the paper became skin um, and layering became important. Um, uh, there's a, uh, what was the, like, can, can you kind of go into that question a little bit more uh, again? Because I think I, I I yeah, I, I, I was like talking about like how also it was like absorbing, uh, you were like doing a transfer, but the paper was absorbing. Yeah. And also that like takes me into like how we digest things yeah. and, and like also like the lace edition is bloat. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. 
the, our loads. It's uh, that's how I feel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The, um, the, the paper fibers get saturated, you know, with, with the oil and it is ephemeral and it has a lifespan. But with the lace edition, what was interesting was, you know, questioning that process too. So early on, the, this, the, the lace edition, I actually started at Stairwell in February in Stairwell Gallery. And it continued that process. I, I was trying to solve it. It, it wasn't finished, you know, so um, Eric, um, Gero and I, uh, you know, we figured out a way to kind of, you know, it's, it's an ink, it's, it's, it's an ink print, a pigmented ink print, so that there's, there's like almost like a freezing of time as part of the, like one of the prints, you know, like, like as, as one part of the print, there's a freezing of time. And then there's another element that's, that's not, that's more ephemeral. And it was trying to solve trying to solve how to create that, um, how to, you know, how to make it function as an artwork. These are individual artworks that, that have that, that, um, that moment um, yeah. where they confront you. And, um, and so this is, this is. Um, so Carmen, let's, um, I think we are like closing, <laughs> closing time. But I really want to talk about this. Um, uh, can you leave that one, Juan, the one before? Um, it's just something that you told me and that has been resonating a lot about your work. And also, I think, um, you know, you were talking about um, the, your art as a tarot cards and uh, how we need to um, create new systems and also question it, you know, like, I feel like art uh, still is important because it's like, like your art is giving us all these questions. And also I am seeing myself in, in your, in the work that you are producing. And I think it's so important that we keep questioning and that we keep testing. And I, you know, testing new systems because we cannot live anymore in the system, the art system and this broadly talking like more philosophically and, and like uh, life, uh, you know, and I know here in this image, you use actually the, the test prints of, of, uh, of the lace edition that now we're going to show it and you can tell us a little bit more about that. But just like the idea of the art as tarot cards, uh, if you can tell us just a little bit more about that, because I think that is very important in, in, in this moment. In, in my work, something that I think about for me, for the work, from my own personal work to function is it has to have this flip. And when I talk about the flip, it is, you know, when you do like a reading of the tarot cards and when I do my own readings, um, what it shows me is where I am in my present. And it's sort of a mirroring that's different than seeing my reflection in a mirror. It's a, it's a confrontation of self. And it shows me something that maybe was harder to see uh, or I couldn't see. And so with this work, I was, I've, I've been through the development of the lace edition print and in the doing of all of these other works, um, there is, it, it, it revealed this confrontation of digestion, of what's in, in, in my head, of these systems of, of how I, the disembodied system or the system that leads to our disembodiment, so much so that it's, that I'm buying this product that actually has a breakdown of the nutrients on it as a branding. Um, yeah. So much so that I'm thinking about an apple as, like I said, 97 calories or even like a blot, a nap, the, the, blotting of a napkin is a removal of a certain amount of like calories or that that moment for me and what that does to my own body and what that does to my own processing and processing and and outside of food what that does to me psychologically uh, in my self in my interaction with others in community in city um, that's what these works started revealing and when I saw that it was just like wow you know and so in this work here you have the layering of this initial language this like 
you know, kind of like question of what is it telling me? What is it, what is it saying? And the freezing of that language. And then you have um, these other, this other layer of um, oil transfers that uh, reveal the process of digesting uh, as, as they move through the, through the work. So um, that's what this is. And then become these creators, but also it reminds me about like, I'm just doing like a, met, a, a literal metaphor of like how we have been uh, distances between each other six feet away, like mm -hmm. the first part and like our bodies are separate and then the uprising mm -hmm. bring us together. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, thank you, Carmen. Uh, I think now should be time to reveal the latest edition and um, and tell us a little bit about that unique mark while you show it to us. But let's get some drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. So. With each latest edition, you also get the unique elements. So um, I'm gonna just turn it around. Each one has a uh, solophon designed by Courtney and Eric Giro. It's beautiful, it kind of lists the materials on it. it comes beautifully packaged like this. Um, and let me show you the details. This is really exciting. Yeah. So that one, has the cover, but this one doesn't, and you can really see um, the unique element. So whereas these are frozen, these are printed in time, that they're marked as, you know, maybe like two days. This one right here, this unique element um, contrasts it. This is like how, like it, it, the whole process was solving this, this one, this in contrast to these, it's the, the one that kind of breaks out. You can kind of see the oil stain on the back here. Yeah, and beautiful. Outlined, um, the print is so beautiful. It's the, the crayon mark. Um, the, the printed one looks just like the, the real one, um, except that the real one is visceral, ephemeral, and on a different, almost like life. I don't know, span. So this is a Lace Edition print, and I'm so happy to be able to support Lace. And I want to thank um, Eric Garrow for being an amazing collaborator in the process and um, bringing his talent and uh, knowledge of, of printing and printmaking and, uh, to, to this edition. So thank you. Thank you, Carmen. And I think now should be time for opening for questions. Um, if you want to write it on the Q&A, also if you are in the YouTube channel, uh, you can write your questions for Carmen in, in the chat and they are going to pass it to me. And um, yeah, so we are now receiving questions for the audience and um, let's see what we have now. Okay, so here uh, from BD on YouTube, uh, they're asking, do you feel a link between automatic writing techniques and your interpretation of that oil transfer? I think it's, it's um, I mean, I think it does go through like the processing of the body. That's one aspect of it as an automatic writing maybe, but there's also the inherent quality of the mark uh, that's out of my control. Um, like in the, the dripping and gravity or the seepage um, and the amount of oil contained in each bar. Um, so maybe more with the, with the creatures in where I am psychologically that day. Um, so for example, with some of the creatures, some of the works were about relationships between these two creatures, you know, and, and they look sort of more 
not like human-like per se, but they're more about interactions between two creatures or three creatures. Um, other ones are more um, somewhere between animal and abstract. Um, some of them, you know, it, it really has to do with, I think with how I've been digesting these energies, these changing energies, because the energy where we started and as the energies have progressed, these different systems have been kind of going through my mind and they've transferred onto the paper surface and onto the mark and to what I'm seeing. Um, and it's interesting that at first I was seeing language and then it just kind of started uh, blurring into forms and characters and then these creatures and then almost like the intestines. Um, so um, we have a question from Nestor. Um, he say, you describe the process of oil transfer over time as a boat, a sign of disembodiment and a form of communication. Language, as you say. I wanted to ask you, what do you think of these two things in relation to one another? Does something need to be disembodied to leave an impression? Hmm. I don't know. Um, I, I think that the, the mark is more inherent to the material. Um, and then it's the material and the process that tells me it's like that reflection or that's that self reflection. And then it's telling me that I'm disembodied, you know, um, the mark or the, the, the gesture itself of like the dripping liquid or the you know, actually in, in my work, um, I've, I've seen, uh, I've, I've become more embodied in the making of my work. Like, let's say whether it's like um, working with like avocado and using my, my fingers to draw with this material or, um, you know, using my own body to make the mark. So the mark is, I, I privilege the process and the process of the mark making, but the mark itself isn't the disembodied element. I think the disembodied element is that moment of reflection, the system that I'm in, that maybe, I mean, that we're in, um, sort of like being confronted with that, being confronted with my own consumption and patterns of that my own way of thinking about something, that's what is revealed um, it, through, through, the, through, that, through that flip more than the, the, the gesture of the seepage, where something can begin with the gesture. So the, the idea of, oh, this is a print because it's like the paper is like skin and it's taking on this thing and it's absorbing, that's the gesture. But then what is this, What's, what is it telling me? Like, I have to follow my gut because there's like an interest or a question there, but then when it kind of talks back, then I have to be willing to converse with it. Um, and that's how I want to, that's, that's an interest in how I build complexity in the work because I don't know what it is until it does that. And then I converse and then it does that again. And it's this back and forth. Uh, to try to get to to the next uh, conversation. Yeah. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, we have a, a question from Andrew Freire. Uh, he said, thank you for this conversation. It's interesting to hear you both describe how the materials Carmen is choosing, um, is choosing are over, oversaturating or expanding beyond its assigned areas. Crayon mark pockets I was wondering if you both can address the ideas of decision to title the edition, bloat. Um, the term has so many connotations and maybe a critique of bodies asked to perform in a peculiar way. Yeah. So what... <laughs> the, the title um, comes again from my own processing and um, 
it it's been it's been a thing you know having these bars in the studio and uh the profound psychological impact with the pandemic and everything that we're dealing with um uh i like i said i started eating these and um it came to a point where i started eating them a lot and i only wanted to eat the ones used in the artwork and um on one hand like the titles have this breakdown of like okay like they're calories in and out or you know they're more like these like listings and on the other they have the titles have the effect that these bars are having as i'm literally digesting them like it's like i might as well be eating the crayons you know i'm eating the bars that have been sitting there for <laughs> so, i mean it is it is I think the search takes me into, I, I, I allow the search to take me into the psychological with the work because I want to know, because it's a question. And at a certain point, there is a loss of control. Like the, the, the seepage goes beyond the line. The illusion of control, you know, is, is exactly that. And so um, I chose to title it Bloat uh, because that's a connection that I was feeling um, in my own body. So uh, that's where the title kind of came from. Yeah, it's super interesting. I, I was thinking a lot about like how, how the system feed us and make us bloat. And, you know, and um, it's not just like what we eat is the body, but it's like what we are, it's all, everything is oversaturating us. Fashion, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's desire. Oh, there is, there is no logic, you know, and like that, that's the, that's the thing that you realize about living and as you become more embodied and within the system, there's no logic and it's always like a, and that's why it's like that moment of self care or reflection becomes so important. That's why it's so important to be embodied in fact, because we can give ourselves that, that time to wrap. It's like having time to see the sun in the middle of the day. It's kind of exactly like that. Um, to kind of take a step back and be able to see ourselves um, a little bit more clearly and in yeah. our like the tarot cards again yeah and uh, and again um i think uh we're gonna close uh somebody was asking if you still are eating the the rx bars uh edward was asking that question um <laughs> Only when it's I don't know. well, <laughs> and when they're there, and I'm still working on the works. But I, that, I had to take them out of my house. Yeah, I have one more question uh, from Susan Power. She's saying, "I'm wondering about how the physical activity of walking intervenes in your process, and then about the ephemerality of the trace, which undergoes transformation from absorbing into the paper." and then dissipating into the air. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the going to the walking, um, being in motion um, really uh, propels my thinking. The walking is, in, is, is essential for me to process. Um, it's very different than being in stillness. It's very different than running. Um, it, it, it literally actually does help with digestion. Um, you know, you, you go a walk after a meal, it, it, it's, but for me, it, it's also this action of these extended walks and it does like maybe like an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and it does, it, it gets me to a point of, of, of being able to do that. And then, um, with the, with the paper and the ephemerality, um, I, I, like I said, I go back to the idea of skin and our skin is, you know, um, always changing. Um, and for me, having that, that aspect in the work where it has a, a lifespan, um, in the print, for example, you know, the lifespan of that, of, of that little bloat area <laughs> mm -hmm. um, is, uh, different than the lifespan of the printed ones. Um, so it's an interesting kind of thing of, of contrast and uh, uh, maybe like questioning like, you know, like awareness and 
ephemerality and permanence and control and loss of control, um, the breaking down uh, and change, thinking about change. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, um, Carmen. I think we're going to close now, but I, yeah, I want to, um, you know, say again, thank you for creating this work, the LACE edition that also is going to support LACE, uh, our programming, our activities. Um, as uh, Sarah mentioned, we're going to have our LACE benefit on September 9th. Um, and, you know, it's so important this work for me, like talking about digestion, uh, for me going out and see the shows at Commonwealth and Council, um, at Stairwell and Clock Shop, and also being in collaboration with them. I, I really appreciate that you, you bring us together because we are always like know each other, but like the fact that we are like in a group collaborating with you, has been a really nice experience, also an experience that reminds us uh, to look into different systems, what you were saying, like change and uh, testing. We need to test new systems. And um, the fact that um, bloat is gonna be part of this history of late editions, you're gonna be part of this lineage of really important artists that are you know, holding lace because without the artists we don't we couldn't be anything so you know lace is not just this lace team but it's like the artists like you that are part of the family is the lace community that are listening right now and i really appreciate everybody that is here and thank you to eric Gerald um, for for supporting this project and corny too and uh all the people from Commonwealth and Council, the stairwell, clock shop, and the hammer. Um, and thank you, you, Carmen. Thank you so this. much. I mean, everyone for coming together to support an artist, to support a practice. Um, it really, yeah, it's a new system. And I hope that, you know, we can find different ways to reflect and to, to you know, change, but we need to change. Be more whole, right? <laughs> yes. So if you want to acquire this beautiful lace edition that has that unique mark, this is a limited edition of 25. So, and each one, of course, has a different mark because it has been in transfer or uh, with a different bar. Um, and uh, you can acquire in welcometolace.org. I think in the chat they put the link, but you can. Just go and buy it and support Lace. And thank you again, Carmen, for this wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela.